Hello students, in this video we will learn the poem An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum composed by Stephen Spender. Stephen Spender was a poet who visited the Gemini Studios in Bombay. He had left his learnings and felt deeply for the poor and the downtrodden. He was not against progress and prosperity, but he wanted that the poor and the downtrodden should have equal opportunities to share the benefits. In this poem, he wants to draw the attention of the society and the government to the dismal condition under which those children live and study. There is a map that shows beautiful cities, ship and love, but these children are deprived of these. He wants that children should be given education in a conclusive atmosphere. Now, with this introduction of the chapter, let us know about its summary more clearly. Stephen Spender visited an elementary school in a slum. The classroom was dim. The paint on the walls was faded. Children were sickly and undernourished. A child's growth was stunted. His bones were twisted. A boy looked dreamy. He was thinking of a squirrel's game. A girl sat with her head weighed down in despair. The gifts given as donations and the pictures of Shakespeare's head are hung on the unpleasant creamy walls. But these are useless to these unfortunate children. In the early morning, the sky is cloudless. Domes of the institutions of the civilized world shine in every city. So are they in Tyrol Valley. Music of bells and fragrance of flowers pervade there. The map of this world is made and reshaped by the people in power. But for these children of a school, in the slum, that world is meaningless. Their own windows are dirty. Unpleasant surroundings from their world. Fog of uncertainty dominates their future. They are doomed to live in narrow streets closed in by the bluish grey sky. Their world is so far from rivers, capes and stars. Shakespeare holds no interest for them, nor the map of the world does them any good. This map shows a world which is not theirs. This world is full of attractions. There are beautiful ships, warmth of the sun and love. Entice these children. They are tempted to steal them away by running away from their miserable surroundings. They live in their narrow crowded holes or layers. Their life starts with the fog of uncertainty and ends with the endless night of their death. On the heap of the waste, these small children wander with their bones peeping out of their skins, wearing spectacles of steel with mended glasses. They look like pieces of broken bottles on stones. All their time and space is spent in these dirty and foggy slums. These slums are nothing less than living hells. Actually, they are a blot on their civilized world. The world of the rich and the great. The map of the civilized world and the slums of these unfortunate children are two entirely different worlds. Governors, inspectors, visitors and other important persons must abridge this gap. They must peep into the world of the children living in the slums. They must make their own world the world of these slum children too. The unsuitable environment of the slums has blocked all their gates to progress. They are lying shut like catacombs. These obstacles should be broken. Everything that binds them should be broken. They must be allowed to breathe in the open. They must be allowed to come out of their narrow lanes and dirty slums of the town. Let them enjoy the beauty of the green fields. Their world should extend to the sky blue waves rising over the golden sands. Let the pages of wisdom be open for them. Let their tongues express themselves freely without any check or fear. Only those people make or create history whose language has the warmth and strength of the sun. With this explanation, we have come to the end of this poetry.